This right here is a CPU block, a DDC pump, and a tiny reservoir combined into a single unit. And it's pretty much an ITX water cooling dream come true. It allows you to save a ton of space on your next custom water cooling loop while still being able to use a powerful quiet pump. You can also fill your loop directly through the small reservoir and fill port on top of the block, making this super easy to use. Oh yeah, and it also has RGB lighting, which actually looks pretty decent, and that's not something that I say very often. This pump lock from Barrow is really a well-built piece of hardware that has come at the right time as well, where nothing like this exists on the market, at least not something that you can buy uh, in stock anyway. So today we're going to take a closer look at exactly what this is and why it's so special, and how you can use it to build a quiet, compact, water-cooled loop exactly like this. So some of you might be familiar with a very similar product to this, the Apogee Drive 2 from SwiftTech. That's the pump lock that I used to cram two 240mm radiators into the end case M1, which offered seriously insane cooling. Unfortunately though, it's barely ever in stock, but even if it was, I'd definitely be recommending this instead. It's better in pretty much every single way. It's produced by Barrow, who are quite well known in the water cooling space, although they are a smaller brand compared to the likes of EK and Al Alpha cool. That hasn't stopped them from producing a really high quality product though and kind of stepping outside of the box, which is exactly what this is. So instead of using a CPU block, a pump and a reservoir, or maybe a pump res combo, you can just use this single piece of hardware which combines all three, which saves a ton of space and also saves you a bit of money as well. The model that I have here is the RGB model. They also make a full black one as well if you're not into RGB lighting. And in terms of the mounting options, you've got the LGA 115X mounting, which is for Intel. That's the one that I've got right here. But you also, of course, have AM4 mounting for AMD Ryzen, and you also have X99 and X299. Now, one way that this is much better than the Apogee Drive 2 from SwiftTech is the fact that it has three ports going into the pump as opposed to just two. So in addition to your inlet and outlet port, you've also got a fill port. This section of the block also serves as a mini reservoir as well, allowing you to make sure that there's always enough liquid feeding the pump. Also, Barrow do not include a fill port plug for that third port, so that's something that you'll need to make sure that you have in addition. Now, overall, the Barrow pump lock is a bit larger than the SwiftTech Apogee Drive 2, and that means that cooler height clearance is going to be a bit worse. Here are some quick measurements that I took comparing the clearance between the two with and without fittings installed. This doesn't make a real difference in cases like the NR200 or NCASE M1, but it does make a difference for cases like the Ghost S1. The Apogee Drive 2 can fit in the Ghost, but the Barrow pump block will not. To reduce the clearance height as much as possible, you'll want to use some low profile 90 degree fittings from Coolant. With these, you can reduce the clearance height overall from 81 millimeters to around 72 millimeters, and I'll leave a link to these down below. Now, if you do go for the RGB model, just know that the lighting is controlled separately with some inline buttons and powered by Molex. Unfortunately, it's not just a three pin or four pin plug that goes into your motherboard. It's less than ideal, but you do get quite a few nice lighting modes, although some of them are a bit obnoxious and rapid. You can of course just leave this disconnected to go for the transparent acrylic look or go for the plain black model instead. I will note though, since the block is mostly frosted acrylic, the vibrancy of the colors is actually quite good and the colors permeate really nicely throughout the whole block. Mounting is super simple, at least with the Intel model that I've got here, just four spring-loaded screws and a mounting bracket at the back. Ideally, you'll want to have the three ports at the tallest point of the block, that way you'll be able to correctly use the fill port. Also, a quick side note, I was planning on using this pump lock to build a dual radiator system in the Cooler Master NR200, but it seems that you will run into some other roadblocks before doing that. I never realized how low the side-mounted radiator actually sits on the NR200, and this means that even a 240mm rad on the side will be hitting the GPU block fittings underneath it. This is a bit disappointing because this isn't an issue on the NCASE M1, and that case is much smaller. So to overcome this, you'll need to use EK's terminal block fittings for the GPU, which I'm actually using on my own system, and that should fix the problem. Seeing as I don't have that terminal block fitting free, I stuck with the single 
single bottom mounted radiator configuration that we used in my last video. And overall, we get a much simpler loop with less fittings and tubing than before, not to mention no need for a discrete pump and res. Now, although I don't really recommend this, I wanted to see whether I could fill the entire loop up just with the single fill port on the pump lock. And you actually can, at least with this loop here. I did have to power cycle the pump a few times to get the liquid flowing, but it did work quite well in the end. For a tiny reservoir like this, it is worth filling it to the absolute brim. Now, in terms of the stock DDC pump that comes with the Barrow pump lock, uh, it's not too bad at all in terms of noise. It's better than the Iceman pump that came with that combo for the NKS M1, but it's still not as quiet as something like a VTX pump from EK. It's running at 1800 RPM now and you shouldn't be able to hear it from this microphone distance. I would say that it's fairly quiet at anything under 2500 RPM. And if you're really susceptible to kind of noise and the hum of a pump, you might want to consider that EK VTX pump as a nice little upgrade. Here's an idea of what it sounds like at the lowest speed, 1800 RPM and then 2500. It does go up to 4600, but that just sounds way too violent. So currently you can pick this up on AliExpress for around 115 US dollars and I personally think it's worth every single dollar. There are three main groups of users though who I think will kind of benefit from this the most. Firstly, those who want a simpler loop with less fittings, tubing and general stuff to worry about in their system. This is going to make getting your water cooled system up and running much faster and easier. It's also going to make your loop more cost effective, which is the second point. You're easily saving over $100 here as you don't need to buy a CPU block, pump and reservoir separately. And then of course, there's the small form factor enthusiasts who have been waiting to do a custom loop in a case like the NCASE M1, Streetcom DA2 or NR200, but haven't found a pump solution that's compact enough, powerful enough and actually available. This is the answer right here. So I'm personally pretty excited that this thing is on the market and actually exists because it opens up a few more opportunities for the kind of builds that you can do in the future. And of course, I will leave it linked down below for those interested. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.